let's do the word defibrillator. This is not necessarily a nice one. Just want to let you know. Uh, I did kind of see it out of the corner of my eye this morning. I felt this is a good scripture for us. So I've rewound it a little bit. So we're going back a few verses and we're going to see where it starts. And the, the playing field or laying the platform does look a little bit stressful. Okay, so you're ready. Luke 6 verse 35. But love your enemies and be kind. Do good. Doing favors so that someone derives benefit from them. <laughs> so that's what it means. It's an amplified version. But love your enemies and be kind and do good. And the expansion on doing good is doing favors so that someone derives benefit from them. <laughs> and lend, expecting and hoping for nothing in return, but considering nothing as lost and despairing of no one. And then your compensates, your reward will be great, rich, strong, intense, and abundant. And you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind and charitable and good to the ungrateful and the selfish and wicked. Now, come on. This can't be scripture, can it? It's telling you to be so nice, like open abundantly to your enemies, people that you resent, people that have hurt us. Yeah, this is heavy. But if you want that great reward, which is rich, strong, intense, and abundant, you've got to do what he does because the Most High, he is kind and charitable and good to the ungrateful and the selfish and wicked. Ow. Then it goes to that wonderful two-syllable word. Now that I've told you, verse 36, so be merciful, sympathetic, Tender, responsive, and compassionate, <laughs> even as your Father is all these. Now remember, God accepted us for who we are, not for who we should be, before we even got to know Him. So this was us. This was us. We were those people. And He was very sympathetic, tender, responsive, and compassionate towards us. That's why you and I are having this conversation because that's what happened to us and through us. We were those people. It's actually quite funny. We were the guys on the other side of the railway track. And why is it that we forget where we come from? And if God can do it for us, why can't he do it for those people? Well, he's going to do it through us. This is what it's actually saying, is we are that example as he was. Judge not neither, pronouncing judgment nor subjecting to censor, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and pronounce guilty, and you will not be condemned and pronounced guilty. Now, remember what judgment is. Judgment is passing a sentence. So, if you're saying to somebody, Phew, I don't think that was very clever, that's not judgment, it's an observation. But if you say, hey, you're really stupid for doing that, you're passing judgment. You're going to go to hell for that, that's passing judgment. Life's not going to go well for you, that's passing judgment. So acquit and forgive and release. Give up resentment. Let it drop and you will be acquainted and forgiven and released. It's actually saying, you do this, this is what you receive. You bless and you're going to get blessed even more. Because that's what it's saying is, is that we are called to have the nature and walk in the nature of God himself, the Most High. And for us, to be sympathetic, tender, responsive, and compassionate, even as your Father is. That's the Father of Heaven. That's your Father and my Father. Our Father who art in Heaven. Whew. And judgment, well, that's Christ Himself. So if we're going to make an observation, it's an observation to call in through prayer the hand of God. Now, verse 38. Give and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will they pour into the pouch formed by the bosom of your robe and used as bags? For with the measure you deal out with the measure you use when you confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. Amen. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's look at it as an end result. So if we are in a place 
that we really need to receive? Well, how is our giving? In any area, giving of our heart, giving of our prayer, giving of our time. Well, if I'm not going to judge you, isn't that me giving you something? Am I not being sympathetic? Is that not a gift? If I'm being tender towards somebody, is that not a gift? Our reward will be rich, strong, intense, and abundant. So Luke 6 verse 38 is our word of Revelator for today. Give, and there was a song. Give, and it will come back to you. Press down, shaken together. Run in over, run cannoli. And here it is. Luke 6 verse 38. Give, and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And running over, will they pour into the pouch formed by the bosom of your robe and used as a bag? Have you ever seen it with, in, when they're using, or you've ever worn a big robe? Go have a look. It's got this like, it's almost like a carry bag. It's going to like pour into that. It's going to run over. And then it says, for with the measure you deal out, with the measure you use when you confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. Hmm. He further told them a proverb. Can a blind man guide and direct a blind man? Will they not both stumble into a ditch, a hole in the ground? You know that saying, a blind leading the blind? A pupil is not superior to his teacher, but everyone, when he is completely trained, readjusted, restored, set to rights, and perfected, will be like his teacher. Who is teaching us? This is Jesus Christ himself. He's using the Father's example. He's telling us what we need to do in order to be like him and for people to look upon us and praise God. Oh, Heavenly Father, this is deep. Holy Spirit, I thank you for this word this morning. I thank you for the excitement of every morning being able to sit with you and just waiting for that word from within the word. Love our enemies. Never said it's going to be easy, but it's necessary. We were an enemy. We were an enemy of the kingdom. We were an enemy of you. But, Father, you've been so sympathetic, tender, responsive, and compassionate. Your mercy rescued us. Why should we hold it back from others? This is not an exclusive club. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can exclusively include you in everything that we do. That we do become like the teacher. That we readjust ourselves. That we restore ourselves to being obedient to the word. That we concentrate on giving of time, spiritual, physical, just a thought, just a smile. And not to get a kickback, Father. But we do know that when we give, gifts will be given to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For the measure we deal out, with the measure we use when we confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to us. Father, is it time to reflect as to what has been given to us? And is this a reflection as to the measure that we've actually given out. More blessed it is to give than to receive, Father, and we know this. Give us the courage, Father, to be able to give. Many of us have been really, really hurt, even when it comes to relationships. And we have hardened our hearts, and we've guarded our hearts. And we're not giving of ourselves, of our joy, of the kingdom, of our thoughts, of your presence. We hold it within. Set us free, Father. As the word says, he who the Son sets free is truly free indeed. We're like a, a bird in a cage and the door's actually open. And all we have to do is just turn around and be free. And we thank you for this freedom. In Jesus' name. Amen.